This video will cover the results to the earlier two videos testing the effects of bearing distance from center or crush on the linear and angular resistance. To understand how these tests were conducted, you can watch this, the, those two videos linked in the description. Now you may ask why bearing scars. String based rifling has many negatives to it. The main disadvantage is the high frictional forces between the moving dart and the mechanism that imparts the spin. To demonstrate, here is a Buster Tech Mark II scar turned to 90 degrees. The weighing scale here will form as the basis for comparison. Also, I'll take a generic dart, put it into the scar barrel, and then slowly force it down on the weighing scale. The values will pick and then stabilize. So what you see is about 200 grams for a string based scar turned to 90 degrees whereas a bearing scar this is level 1, the tightest of the 7 if I were to put it at the same About, let's say let's say it's 30 so it's about six to seven times less for a bearing scar or more if if the the width is the distance is slightly the crush is slightly less so it's about seven seven times the this test will only apply to one ball bearing model this particular model of ball bearing was chosen for its compactness and availability. So now I'll go through the results of the earlier test. So first I will showcase the, the values that were recorded. So what happened was at every crush level I started from the widest going down to the narrowest so from the widest I will rotate from that number 1 to 5 and then repeat the test for 5 mm, 2 mm, 5 mm per second from that 1 to 5 so when I go back to when I start the 10 mm per second test I will be using that number 1 again after it, has, after it has rested from the time I, I proceeded with the next 2, 3, 4, 5 dart. So this whole test was done for the 7 all the way to 1 for 2 mm per second, 5 mm per second, 10 and then 20. The 30 and 40 mm per second were, were, taken, were, were not conducted because the weighing scale wasn't quick enough to register the the values. This was then done for the worker gen three darts in a similar fashion, rotating about the same five darts. And then subsequently, the second video, I went with angular testing of the darts. However, because of the nature of the test, this was linear and then angular because of the nature of the test angular uh, I foresee that it might scrape some material off the dart foam foam area body so I for every test 
from level 7 to 1 all these were brand new darts and they will not be beaten so it was done for Adventure Force and Worker Gen 3 once the values were taken they were averaged averaged and transferred to another sheet so these are the values these values makes no sense right now but it will make sense when it's plotted on the graph which I will show later on so before that before before this compression test was crush test was performed that was done and I went ahead to extract the twist values from available scar barrels and then mapping them to their accepted performance ranges so for bearing so for uh, string string scars string based scars the 90 to 100 degree turn this one range corresponds to about 7 to 8 degrees of bearing angle off center and then for this region most people found that the ranges including myself perform well in this region then the china bearing scar had three values five degrees eight degrees and ten degrees and then they were advertised to work well within these ranges this for above 200, 200 feet per second this was below 100 and 100 and 30, 140 under 440 so what I found was after plotting this chart I found that the RPM dart spin speeds were about 8,000 8, to 12,000 ranges and my earlier test platform for the compound bearing scar to test the effects of exhaust porting was higher than the range of usually accepted performance this was one and then so knowing that the range should be about 8,000 to 12,000 oh, there's one more this, this one more the scar region 50 to 80 although it's not usually used for most of the scars if the scar is actually tight enough it will still work so this is the region for 50 to 80 degree turn then knowing that the speed is around 8000 to 12000 the spin rate so i've plotted this and then it can be found that between so for example 100 feet per second that velocity you want to have a 10 to 15 degree bearing turn bearing, bearing degree offset so the higher value the highest the higher number is 12,000 and the the lowest graph is 8,000 so you want to have something in between so for let's say for darts for blasters at performing performing at 150 to 250 a good value would be between 6 to 7 degrees and from there the values to this to this table were then plotted onto a graph so I'll cover adventure force first so for adventure force this is plunge speed, the rate at which the this was pushed down into the dart, and then the resistance felt by the weighing scale. Level seven is the widest, level one is the tightest. So what you can see is level seven being so wide it barely registered on the on the weighing scale. Going up with tightness, we can see that it goes up almost linearly and then past this tightness the resistance went up exponentially so 
I would say that the acceptable or crush is about this area. The numbers is are arbitrary numbers because the actual value is not. Uh, I, I'm not disclosing it right now. And what's interesting is, this is plant speed of two millimeters per second, five, ten, and then twenty. Fifteen was not performed. It's a rather interesting U shape. I think because there was, um, you know, you know, in in bearings, there's this there's some oil and then some grease inside, so it might be too slow that the that some frictional forces at play that that increases the resistance, whereas. 10 millimeters per second it was just nice that the frictional forces were over overcome but not to a point where where additional friction came into play so this was interesting to notice a u-shape how this extrapolates to 200 300 feet per second i'm not quite sure because i do not have the platform or test equipment to test that but i would say the crush values between two and three are good enough Similarly for worker gentries, this is the, the same can be identified. However, because worker gentries are actually slightly wider than adventure force starts, so the values are higher. This is the same scale. If I put them side by side, the values from 7 to 1 are slightly higher than the adventure force. However, the same trend uh, remains almost linear advance and then an exponential increase so 2 to 3 would be a good value then for angular resistance from crush 7 to 1 it was found that the crush between 2 to 3 was is, is, is about good it went up linearly and then have it plateaued a little bit and then it went up I, I would say that this is slightly steeper than this so against this is a good support to the linear test showing that 2 to 3 is about good enough for this for this particular bearing model yep so right now I have I have shown that the porting uh, works the I've known the proper RPM and the proper bearing angle and then I have I know the suitable crush so I should be able to make a pretty awesome scar barrel bearing bearing scar I, I'm thinking of changing the name from scar because scar is string based centering the rifling so I'll think about a new name to, to to change to because bearings are no longer strings yeah, that's the end of the video